Hey everybody, I am just thrilled today to be able to introduce our next guest to you. This man is an author, he's an entrepreneur, he's a keynote speaker, he's a business growth expert, and quite frankly, Jackie and I have never met anyone like this man before. We've known him for some years now, and I cannot thank him enough for his time today. It's tough enough to edit these interviews and find all the bits of gold, but to, to edit this one and to try and pack it all into just a small clip is extremely difficult. It was, it was almost impossible, to be frank. This is his book, Have Your Cake and Sell It Too. I strongly urge anyone in business, if they're looking for a way or looking for ways to improve their lifestyle and their business and looking for the key ingredients to get to where they want to go in life and in work at work, then this is the book you have to read. If you haven't heard him before, get a pen, get a piece of paper and a cup of coffee, of course. Sit back and listen to the great man. His name is Jason Cunningham. Thanks for talking to us, Jason. Hey, you're welcome, Darren. Firstly, when did you, I mean, your company's called The Practice. Mm -hmm. When, how long ago did it start and how did it come about? Yeah, good question. So the story around our business is we began life on the 1st of December, 1997. Um, our story is this, uh, the two founding partners went to primary school, high school and university together. Uh, we both went our separate ways. I worked at Ford Motor Company in Broadmeadows and my partner, Rob, worked for an accounting firm in town. And after about four or so years, we came together and decided that we should go into business together. But he's been to a business coach earlier on in the year and, and he told us and he implored on us the importance of being on purpose. And he said, boys, if you can work out and be on purpose and, and build the foundation of your practice, then everything else will follow. So the best way to do that is get yourself out of your business, go away and spend a few days together, work out your purpose and in business we call a purpose, a mission statement, get that right and then build your business plan and the rest will go. So here we are, two blokes in suits on a plane on our first business tax deductible trip. <laughs> we're, we're so excited. We weren't making any money. We didn't need the tax deduction. But um, we were so excited. We made 1200 bucks each that year and we flew off to write our first business plan. <laughs> I spoke to you about how we built our, our purpose, our mission statement, and that's to help our clients achieve their business and personal goals, being proactive and having an ongoing relationship, right? We took it to another level and created a why. Why do we do the things that we do? Why do we behave the way that we behave? Why do we get up in the morning? And our why comes down to three little words, liberating people's lifestyles. And so when you ask me, Jason, what is it that you do different than other accounting firms? I, I talk to our why. We're all about liberating people's lifestyles. 20 years ago, Robbie and I went away to build our strategic plan. And for the last 20 years, we've been doing the same thing. So three times a year, we take business owners away. We keep the room to a smallish size, 30 to 35 of us. And we go through this three-day program where we have different speakers that come together. And it's all on the back of the seven key ingredients to business success. If we can create an environment of abundance and collaboration, if you create a, a, a true, authentic environment of abundance and collaboration, then something amazing happens. You achieve synergy. And when you achieve synergy, the whole becomes greater than the sum of the parts. And if you create and cultivate this environment that allows this freedom and this communication and this we're all in this together abundance mentality, man, you should see what happens. And when on the last day when we're hugging people and we're saying goodbye and they go, man, this dramatically changed my life, man, that's what we live for. How I word it is this, I'll often talk to business owners and I'll say, tell me why you went into business. And people will say to me, well, maybe it's to make more money. I want to be the boss. Uh, and then it goes into, I want to spend more time with my friends and family. Um, I want to choose when it is that I come and go to work. I, I, you know, I want to take eight weeks off. I want to take my kids to school. And then my follow-up question is, and how's that working out for you? We all seem to get stuck doing it. And, and, and every business owner, they articulate it differently, but they want to have their lifestyle liberated. Uh, and that's how we can help them. I think that anybody who's got a vision and has a skill set, anybody can run a business. The challenge is, if you're really good technically at what you do, if you're really good technically, whether that is a barista, an accountant, a lawyer, a uh, truck driver, if you're really good at it, chances are you're not gonna be a good business owner. And the reason for that is that you wanna always take control. Now the definition of a business is getting leverage from other people's time with a view to make a profit. 
And too often those amazing technicians that are really awesome at their craft, they don't let anyone else have a crack. The better business owner is, is the guy or the girl that gets in there and lets people do their stuff. And you and I have known each other for a long time and you know that I know that business is all about the people. And if you can create an environment that's not only uh, attractive enough for people to want to come and work in that business, but also adhesive enough to hold on to them, then that's the business that's really going to fly. So there's this thing or theory called the alchemy of growth. Right? And the alchemy of growth talks to this, most businesses have a rapid growth, then peter off a little bit, and then grow again and peter off again, and grow again and peter off again. One of the critical success factors for a business getting kicked off and getting started and getting some traction and growing is the business owner himself or herself. However, if they don't get out the way and let their people take it to stage two and beyond, then you're always gonna plateau and eventually you'll fall off the cliff. What we did five years ago is no longer relevant today and that includes us. We need to change our role and we need to provide an environment that allows our people to be the very best that they can be. And if we do that and then we step out and we actually run our business and eventually move even step away from that to owning our business, that for me is utopia. One of the ingredients of being effective is start with the end and work backwards. So taking that philosophy and applying it to business, I argue that every business owner should begin with the end in mind and that is build a business that's ready for sale, even if you don't want to sell it. Now if I speak to somebody that's been in business two or three years and I say, hey Darren, you've only been in business for a short time, you should build a business ready for sale, you're gonna to say to me, no Jay, I don't want to. I went into this business to have a bit of fun and create a great lifestyle. I go, yeah, cool, but just if you work with me on this. If your business is ready for sale, what does it look like, what does it sound like, and tell me what does it feel like? So a business that's ready for sale is highly profitable, has amazing cash flow, has a team that are a delight to work with, has the right type of customers coming back over and over and over again. It allows you to remove yourself from the business so you can come and go as you please. And the big benefit is someone will write you a dirty big check and say, hey, I wanna take that off your hands. The irony in this whole thing about building a business that's ready for sale is once you get there, you don't wanna sell it. So when people sort of get that concept, they go, hang on, Jay, oh, I think you might be onto something there. Because the biggest challenge I see with most businesses that have been in business two or three years plus, is that they feel like they're tied to the business. My guess is that that applies whether you're in big business or whether you're running the local cafe. Absolutely. You know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm an accountant by trade, CPA, also known as a car parking attendant. A local cafe, right? You, I know how passionate you are about coffee and, and your black velvet blend, and, and but it's also not about just, the, the, it's not just about the, the grains and the blend, but it's also about how you make the coffee. If you can build a business that, again, as you start off, you talk about yourself, but then maybe turn that on its head and create a business about the business, then you have the freedom to come and go as you please. Minor, you know, life is not just about a financial decision, Darren. I think life's about so much more than that. Life's about, you know, people talk about success and this is not mine, it's someone else's, but the definition of success is something along the lines of doing what I want, when I want, and with the company that I want to keep. Mm. But if you're tied to your business, you can't do that, mate. Well, I, I, it's funny, I just used it before, and that is don't get, ahead of, don't get too ahead of yourself, young man. I think that's some pretty sound advice. But, okay, I'm gonna have two if I can. Um, my mum, when I was a kid, she said to me, Jason, you can do anything and you can be anything that you want. And I remember, this is just before my parents lost everything, and I remember we were living in Essendon, and I was about 10, and I said, Mum, does that mean I could even fly like Superman? And she said, Jason, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And I think that's the best bit of advice that I've had. Always love your mum, mate, you're the best. You're a champion, Jason. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank you.